gerpaddle or something disciplinary like that. action that's right. right some disciplinary action that mm-hmm. used a physical uh, punishment mm-hmm. which is certainly frowned on today yeah it is but it works absolutely works <laughs> I could tell you that it works and it's not detrimental to the child which is what society will tell you today don't hit your child is what they calling it but God made a, a soft round place for you to spank that child where it doesn't hurt them that's right and, and the thing about it is mm-hmm. You know, God knows. God designed the human body. He, he designed the family. He designed children. And uh, when he says, <clears throat> basically, even God, speaking of his children and us, it says that he disciplines every child whom he loves. And if he doesn't discipline you, you're not his child. That's what he, he says. I see so many uh, parents and children in the, in the, like in grocery stores or, you know, Walmart, and their children are absolutely out of control. And one thing that that you helped me with when when my kids were little is that you said, you know, you need to train them at home. When you have them at home, train them at home. So when you get out in the store, there won't be a battle. There won't That's be a right. struggle right. because they'll already know what's expected of them and they'll know how they're supposed to behave. That's right. And I know when our kids were little, if they misbehaved in the store and did something they weren't supposed to do, we just we looked at them and said, if they were old enough to understand us, we said, you know, when we get home, we're going to deal with this. Or if they were small, we just left the store. We left what we were doing so we could teach them right at the time. That's right. You know, and took care of it. But, That's right. And, you know, it takes, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot it's of a work. It's a lot of work, and it, it takes a lot of effort uh, to raise your children. I remember, you know, uh, uh, taking our children out of services uh, lots of times. Uh, you know, when maybe they would start to act up a little yeah. bit and, uh, and take them outside. Mm-hmm. And the first thing you do is you talk to them. They don't respond to the talk, then you have to spank them. Mm-hmm. There's not a thing wrong with spanking your children. Matter of fact, mm-hmm. it's wrong not to spank your children when they need spanking. Children understand that when you spank them, unless you're spanking in anger. Now, you see, most parents spank their children because they get at the end of their rope. In other words, they're striking out at their children because they're mad at them. And that's wrong. That's simply wrong. But the children, the reason they keep acting out is because you let it go. Now, I've always mm-hmm. told our children, when you say no, you only need to say it one time. Right. There's no reason to say no more than once. I never wanted any of my children, when they asked if they could have something or they could go somewhere. If mm. I said yes, I meant yes. And if I said no, I meant no. Right. And uh, go ahead. Especially young mothers uh, and women in particular are multitaskers and they do a lot of things at once. And it's very tempting to not be purposed in your instruction to your children and to not pay attention. If you tell a child no or they can't do this or they need to do this, well, make sure, make a little mental note, try to, and follow up on that so you don't end up saying no again or telling the child to pick up their socks again, you know, because that's how that gets started. You know, uh, I, I believe that a lot of parents today, especially mothers, are uh, acting out of guilt. Uh, there's, it's just difficult in our society today uh, for people to... Uh, make an income uh, that will support their family without both the husband and the wife working. It's just increasingly difficult today. So, uh, and also part of the problem is, is people live above their means. They're unwilling to to live, uh, you know, in a very modest way and do without some things. And, you know, I I would... uh, and I know you would second uh, what I'm saying here, mm-hmm. that your, you know, your, your main responsibility is to raise those children in the Lord. Now they belong to God, and He ex- He's entrusted them to you, and He expects you to raise them and prepare them for a, an eternity mm-hmm. with Him, and He will hold us responsible. Uh, and I think a lot of times when, when women, uh, and some people are forced to, this, to work, uh, also yeah. there's so many, uh, even in our congregation, we have young 
mothers that uh, single, moms. Uh, single moms or their husbands uh, have divorced them mm -hmm. and uh, you know they're trying to raise their children alone and they have to work and they have to hold down a job and it makes it difficult because then you're putting your children in some type of care other than your own. You're, you're placing your children, mm -hmm. God's children, in, into somebody else's hands and, yeah. and they are whether they mean to or not, they're helping to shape and mold them. Yeah. And so with a lot of our young mothers, uh, the limited time that they have with their children is very important. Yeah. It's very, very, very important because they're having to undo uh, a lot of things that have been done wrong in a daycare or with a with a babysitter absolutely. or a nanny. Absolutely. And in our case, you know, you were a homemaker for the most part. Yeah. And so we didn't have to undo things very often. But even then, sometimes, you know, our children, even visiting my parents or your parents that may have a different philosophy, not mm -hmm. be quite as strict biblically. Well, no, no one knows what's going on with your children like you do, That's like right. the parent does. And I had wonderful parents, and we let our kids go maybe once a month or once every couple of months to spend a couple of days with my mom and dad. And uh, they weren't people who didn't respect the rules, but even at that, I know when the kids got home, there was a little period of adjustment there where the kids had to get back to rela reality and realize that life's not all about them. You know, it's good to have fun sometimes, but this is how, how it really is. And you know, when you're talking about being in the grocery store, you know, one thing that always bothered me uh, was seeing uh, children act up in the checkout aisle because there in the checkout aisle is where they put all the candy, all the candy. and the desirable things for kids, even some of those little toys, toys mm -hmm. and things like that. And, uh, you know, children, uh, they're just standing there waiting. And it's a lot of temptation for those little children. Now, I've, what I told our children, when uh, they were little, we would take them to the store. If they asked for something, they were starting to beg for something in that checkout line, they surely would not get it. Absolutely. But if they were uh, control themselves and they just, you know, we're going there to get groceries, we're not going there to get candy and they or they behaved toys, well in the store. But if they behave well in the store and they helped mom and they, you know, mm -hmm. help push the cart or they help get pick, mm -hmm. put things in the cart, take it out. Mm -hmm. We get the checkout aisle and, and they were uh, respectful and mm -hmm. quiet. Uh, then we would usually, I would tell them, I said, then you might get something. And most of the time we would get them something. Right. And even with our little children here in the church, uh, they know me as Big Daddy and you as Mama T or B Big Mama. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, the same thing goes for them. One of them here, uh, a while back, I, I was taking them to Walmart, and the couple of them, no, there was three of them, I think, in the back seat of the car, and I could hear them talking while I'm on my way to Walmart, and one of them said, now, you know, if, uh, if, you, if you ask Big Daddy for something in the store, and you start asking him for something, now he won't give it, but <laughs> if you don't say anything, you then might get you something. Might get. And so they were talking about that, see. And of course, uh, you know that if they if they behave well, it's my pleasure to give to them. I want to give to them. And it's not that we don't.